on. Okay. Um, right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Students for Political Engagement. My name is Sean, and I am joined here today with my fellow correspondents, Matthew, Jacqueline, and Rishi. Today, we have an interview with Councillor David West, who is a mayoral candidate, business owner, and longtime resident of Richmond Hill. Welcome, Mr. West. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So just to start off on a light note, in your many years of living and being involved in Richmond Hill, what do you feel has been your biggest accomplishment so far? Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I, I have lived in Richmond Hill a long time. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, I think there's, um, you know, in, during the time that I've been count on council, which is the last eight years, um, I think, you know, there's, uh, there's a few things that I'm particularly proud of, although there's a, a lot of other things too that are, you know, that I'm also quite uh, happy that have happened and so on. But I think one of the um, one of the things that I'm particularly pleased with is the the fact that we had um, uh, I, I was able to move a number of motions on council in the last number of years that have really helped uh, move forward uh, the natural environment, and I think that's something that people have repeatedly told us is very very important. Um, you know, there's two motions in particular that happened a while ago. Uh, one was the monarch, uh, mayor's monarch uh, butterfly uh, pledge, and the other was the bee city pledge. And and both of those, um, I know it's you know it's just insects and so on, but I, I think the both of those motions really helped us uh, to create a, a result that was some really great um, uh, movement forward in in naturalizing and uh, acres and acres of land creating more awareness and, and really making a difference um, to two species that are important to us. Um, I also think that the, um, you know, in this term of council, I, I moved a motion for single use plastics and the reduction of single use plastics in our community. Um, we have a lot of work to do in that and so does the country and, and the province and the, and the, um, the uh, uh, national government are also do, making good strides in that regard. And I'm pleased that Richmond Hill is moving forward as well. Um, and probably one of the most important parts for, of, from an environmental perspective is the uh, community energy and emissions plan uh, that we have passed. And I produced, uh, you know, I think fairly strong leadership in the, in the process to get to where we were going. We had great involvement from the community. And what this plan does is it, it uh, commits us to a net zero greenhouse ga gas emission uh, target in Richmond Hill in the coming decades. So I think that's really important. Um, you know, I, I think the only the other thing I would say that I'm really proud about is um, I've always felt it's really important to, you know, when you're a, a, in a leadership role uh, as an elected official, you really have to engage people. Um, you know, it, sometimes people don't necessarily want to be, um, you know, engaged in every decision. But, you know, when we make decisions, we need to know very well that we've got the input uh, from people. We need to listen to what they have to say and work in a collaborative kind of way. Um, and I've, I've always believed that the first way to get that going is good communication. Um, so I've worked really hard to make sure that I'm constantly communicating with, with my constituents and, um, you know, through different means, including a monthly e-newsletter, social media, and so on. Um, you know, and also having meetings with residents. I mean, not so much during COVID, although we've been having a lot of electronic meetings, um, which actually have their advantages. Um, but and also, you know, just making sure that I've, I'm always involved in what's uh, happening and, and being proactive. And I think that's those are all the elements of, of uh, people getting people engaged in our in our decision process. Yeah, thank you very much. That was an excellent response. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. As a person who forages, um, especially the monarch butterflies, I personally there is, is a milkweed patch near my home. And I frequently see a lot of monarch butterflies, and I think it's really beautiful. Yeah, you know, Jacqueline, sorry if I could just interject. You know, it's interesting because when my son was really young, mm -hmm. we used to uh, raise them and tag them. And, oh. you know, we, we, would, we would raise them at our cottage, and then we would bring them home to Richmond Hill when we came home. And we had a heck of a time trying to find milkweed. Um, and one of the things that I think that the Mayor's Monarch Pledge has done, because one of the commitments was that we would make sure that we planted more milkweed and we would mow less. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's now quite a bit of milkweed in Richmond Hill, and I think that's a great outcome, you know, for monarch butterflies, for sure. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't help <laughs> say that. It's, yeah. Um, on to the next question. Richmond Hill has, like, has ranked last on the Municipal D Democracy Index 
You have mentioned making decisions based on what people want. In a world where communication and motivation is stunted by the COVID-19 pandemic, how do you plan to further democracy and transparency, transparency in order to serve the interests of the people? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so I, I'm not, you know, in, in, in many ways, I mean, the pandemic has been really hard on a number of different aspects of our community, and there's absolutely no debate in my mind about that. The one thing I will say, though, is that it has opened a lot of people's eyes to a, a number of electronic ways of being in touch with people. Um, it's forced me to, you know, become a lot more um, uh, willing and adept to uh, getting the word out through social media. And, um, you know, Zoom calls, I mean, it, it, it's not an ideal thing. I mean, it's always better to be able to meet in person. There's no question about that, but it has its place. And, you know, uh, we weren't using Zoom very much before we had to. So I think that there are some aspects of this uh, pandemic that we can learn from, you know, and, and bring the parts that really were good at engaging people into the future. And I think that's a very good thing. Um, so I, I think that's fine. I, I think that, um, you know, having lots uh, of you know opportunities to engage the residents and being proactive about it um, has always been something that's been important to me and um, I think that you know if you give people the opportunity to comment on decisions before they're being you know they're, they're solidified um, people will take that opportunity and we've seen that in Richmond Hill right now we are going through a an enormous number of policy reviews, including our official plan, our parks, culture and recreation plan, um, some key area plans that we have in Richmond Hill, the, in, in the Ward 4, where I represent the Mill Pond Park Master Plan. We have received enormous amounts of citizen input during those, um, you know, during those processes. And, you know, the staff and council have made a, an effort to engage and during the pandemic, you know, Primarily, the way to go was to um, engage engage through electronic means, and they've been very successful. Um, so I think that that's important that we, again, take everything we've learned and, and make sure we apply it to the future. Um, I'm always committed to having residence meetings whenever we need to. Um, you know, I think that's a really good opportunity, and hopefully we can get back to in-person residence meetings. Um, I think, you know, I've always felt um, every year I put on, uh, like, like every councillor, uh, a maximum of two events that we could have host in the public. And this is before the pandemic happened. Um, I always try to make sure that those events are focused on citizen engagement. Um, you know, I've had a very successful EcoFest in Richmond Hill. And, you know, the theme of that obviously was the natural environment. I had all kinds of people that came out to that before the pandemic, but I also carried it on after the pandemic and we had a good response, you know, electronically. Um, but if you present um, events like that, that people want to come out with, it's also a really good opportunity for them to engage with their elected officials. Um, you know, I, I, I really miss not having my maple syrup festival live and in person, um, but you know, we would get a thousand or more people out to that event. And, you know, it grew every year over the years until we had to, shut it down to, during the pandemic, um, you, you know, so th those are also the opportunities that I think elected officials need to, need to constantly think about, you know, being out there, whether it be virtually or in person and, and you know, and, and both. And I think that's really important. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so, of course, throughout this interview, you've mentioned um, a lot of things regarding the environment, your eco fest and your uh, policies regarding monarch butterflies, etc. So I guess now the question is um, your intention to build Richmond Hill to be more sustainable and environmentally friendly. What policy measures going forward as mayor uh, would you implement to make sure that we can protect the natural landscape of Richmond Hill and the environment? Yeah. So I just, I, you know, just I want to reiterate, I, I think it's really important that we do that. I mean, Richmond Hill actually is in a very interesting and unique position where we, um, you know, we have this large Oak Ridge's moraine that covers a good part of our community. And a lot of it actually is protected and off limits. We've got lots of um, river valleys and stuff that come from the Oak Ridge's moraine and, and, you know, and go into Lake Ontario and so on. So we really are blessed. And I think we need to take a really serious environmental stewardship uh, role and and so that's what I've always believed in Richmond Hill. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think some of the key things that we've done uh, in this term of council and I've supported and I will continue to support is the community energy and emissions plan. Um, you know, reducing greenhouse gases is definitely a good thing for the environment. 
And I actually think that there are economic uh, opportunities, um, economic development opportunities to become a more green community and be a more green leader. You know, um, if we're, if we're going to have to change, and I think with climate change, we do have to change our ways. Um, there are technologies that can be developed right here in Richmond Hill um, with a very highly educated workforce that we have um, that can also, so it's not, it's not just a cost, it's also an investment. Um, and it's also an investment in our future. Um, I think our environment strategy has always been probably one of my uh, favorite policy documents. And um, we are reviewing that um, right now. And, you know, that is a document that has always uh, not gathered dust. You know, we, we, you know, refer back to it. It does not sit on a shelf. And I expect the new environment strategy to do the same. And as a matter of fact, in the new way of doing things with the environment strategy, we are producing an environmental report card um, to report out on our progress every year. So um, we've always reported out on the progress to make sure that we're on track, but now we're reporting out on the progress and rating how well we're doing at the various um, things that we're doing, which I think is important. Um, I think that you know having more parks and open spaces as we grow in Richmond Hill is really important. Um, you know, I, I right now during the pandemic, it, there's no question that our parks are really well used. And, uh, you know, if we're going to be adding people to our community, and we will, um, we, we need to make sure that we keep up with our um, acquisition of parkland so we have new parks for people to enjoy as well. Um, you know, I, I mentioned the Oak Ridge's Moraine earlier. Uh, we have lots of areas uh, that are off limits to development um, in the Oak Ridge's Moraine. And in my view, that means forever. Um, you know, it's not protected until sometime that it's inconvenient and we'll develop it. Um, we really need to be diligent in protecting the lands that we've said we're going to protect. Um, there have been a couple of times on this council where, you know, we've seen motions that uh, would potentially uh, lead to opening up of lands that are protected. And uh, I will, I will always voted against that. And I, I will continue to speak out against that because it's just not acceptable. Um, we, sorry, I, we just have a, we have an urban forestry strategy too that we passed this year and, uh, and that's really important. Um, the health of our urban forests is crucial. Um, you know, we've had a real devastating impact on our forests over the last few years with the emerald ash borer and with climate change. And um, I think it's really important that we revitalize our, you know, our natural spaces and do what we can to bring back uh, some uh, additional health to our forests um, that we have here in Richmond Hill. Thank you. Um, that was, yeah. Uh, I think now we're going to move on to Matthew for our closing questions. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, Councillor West, so um, obviously um, we are an organization that engage, it tries to engage people in politics and particularly young people. So do you have anything to say to young people about why they should be involved in um, politics and specifically municipal politics? And is there also anything you would like to say to young people who are thinking of getting involved in politics? Yeah, um, that's very close to my heart. Um, as I mentioned before, I, you know, I, I, um, I used to be a teacher, so I, I think I've been trained to understand that you know, um, you know, teaching the next generation and sharing the, the knowledge uh, is really important. Um, and you know, I know it's very cliche that you know the younger people are are you know the next leaders, but it's true, right? And I think that um, you know, in my journey to this point, um, you know, I, I one of the things that I think I look back on and I understand more about my journey to get to be an elected official was that I volunteered a lot. In a in kind of a servant leadership role in many many organizations, and I suspect strongly from you uh, for sitting here today that you're already doing that. You know, you're you're in a position where you're representing uh, a constituency, uh, your friends, your neighbors, you know, whatever, um, and that is fantastic work that that people are doing in those positions. But it's also as a young person, I think it's very important practice. You know, um, being a leader. And being a servant leader that's that's focused on serving the you know the constituency that you're representing is a very important skill to develop. It just doesn't happen overnight, in my estimation. And I know in my life, um, I volunteered for countless um, things. I was the guy that could never 
not put my hand up to volunteer for something. And when, you know, when the job needed to be done, I, I found myself, you know, compelled to volunteer to do it. But, but the, what that taught me was, you know, how to work with people, how to, how to be a leader, how to make sure that we're putting up the organization's interests above my own. Uh, and, you know, and this happened over many, many years with increasingly large amounts of responsibility to the point where it was an opportunity to become an elected official. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm now I'm ready, you know. Um, so, you know, when you're ready is the time to do it. Um, but in the meantime, make sure that you're you're doing everything you can to, uh, you know, to, in, you know, get understanding of the process. Um, I also think it's really important for young people to be reaching out to elected officials um, that like you're doing today. Um, you know, as an elected official, you know, we need to hear from people and, you know, sometimes young people are not the people that reach out to older guys like me. Um, and I really think it's great that, that, you know, we have young people engaged in the process um, with great ideas um, and, you know, we need to be making sure that those ideas are being heard. Um, so I, th those are kind of some of the things that I think are important. Um, I, I think that, you know, a, a career in politics is, is something that is a, a definitely a good thing, and, and I would never discourage anybody from doing that. But in my opinion, um, you know, I, I think you need to have an understanding of, of what it means to be in a servant leader position, and that would, will equip you very well for, uh, for what would be lying ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I know when I was younger, one of my teachers was pretty instrumental in me being more interested in politics. Um, and yeah, and looking at that yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's, you're, you're totally right, um, Rishi. And, and, you know, th there's, you know, I, I guess that's another thing, too, that you make a good point that, um, you know, if, if people are interested in doing that kind of thing, um, you know, there's lots of mentorship opportunities. I mean, people who are truly a servant leader, um, probably are also looking for other people to to you know come up you know you're you're always looking you know no no person in a political position will be there forever and it is a responsible thing to do to make sure that you're you're mentoring people that are are going to take the torch you know from behind you so you know having mentors like that is awesome i mean you know teachers are great like that mm -hmm. yes and um for our Final question. So obviously you've lived for a very long time in Richmond Hill and over the years, what do you think um, you're most fond of in the city? Um, you know, it's, uh, that's, that's, uh, I appreciate that question. It's, uh, I, I, I've always, I grew up actually in Maple, you know, which is the, in Vaughan. It wasn't called Vaughan that, at that time, it was Maple. And I ended up going to high school here in, uh, in at Langstaff, actually. And so I always really liked Richmond Hill. I thought it was it was a great place to come. I mean, a lot of my friends were here and, and all that kind of stuff. So it, it, it stuck in my heart very early in my life. But one of the things that I've always thought about Richmond Hill, and I still think this to this day, is that it's a um, Richmond Hill had not as much as it used to, but it still has that kind of uh, smaller town community feeling to it. I mean, we're certainly a growing city. We were not. Uh, the, the population that we were when I went to high school, but there's still something about Richmond Hill that I believe is, is a unique thing. It's, it's you know, it, we're not the same as some of the other surrounding municipalities around us. Um, and I think, you know, when I started in business, um, that, that, you know, what Richmond Hill was, was a, it was a great place to do business and still is. Um, you know, it's, it's small enough to so that you know lots of people and, and, and you know how to, to get around, but it's, it's also big enough so that you have opportunities here. And, you know, we need to do the best we can as we grow to make sure that we maintain some of that. Um, I, I think the other thing I love about Richmond Hill, and I, I realize this more now than I've ever noticed it before, is that I think that there are some really exciting uh, opportunities that we have as a community going forward. I mean, we are going to grow. Um, and if we get it right, which I cert you know, certainly am going to work to make sure that we do, um, you know, there's lots of, of places that can be much more vibrant and dynamic um, than they perhaps are today. So I think that there's lots of really exciting uh, opportunities ahead. Um, and I guess the other thing I would say is that I've always really appreciated um, the fact that Richmond Hill 
is, you know, is a community that has lots of people living here and houses and subdivisions and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, if you drive or, or take transit or take your bike a very short distance away from where most people end up living, you can be out in a forest. You know, and if you close your eyes, or well, you don't have to close your eyes, if you, you know, just look around, I mean, chances are it's going to feel like you're, you know, maybe somewhere that's a whole lot further away from an urban area than you think. Um, and there's lots of places like that in Richmond Hill. And I think that's really important. And I've always appreciated the fact that our community seems to have a lot of areas like that. Um, you know, Lake Wilcox, it's a you know beautiful lake, uh, you know, Bond Lake, Lake St. George, the Jefferson Forest, uh, Twickenham Park is one of my favorite uh, places in Richmond Hill. I mean, the uh, trillions there are fantastic in the spring. I've, I've never seen anything like it. You know, um, I live not too far from the Mill Pond and I find myself there quite a bit. The Dunlop Observatory is, is magnificent and it is an absolute jewel, but not just for Richmond Hill, but for Canada. So we have lots of really great places in Richmond Hill and, um, you know, we need people expect that we're going to be uh, protecting and enhancing those places. Um, but those are the things that have always really resonated with me in, in Richmond Hill. You know, aside from the obvious, I mean, you know, the people that live here are great. You know, our cultural diversity is great. Um, you know, and, and I think we have, we have just so much going for us that, um, you know, it, there's lots to be fond of. Yeah. I mean, on the topic of like trilliums, we have it on her lasers right now. And, I know I go to the DDO quite often just to see because it's a really nice place. Um, and really, the it, it feels like you're away from the rest of the city. Yes, it does, actually. Yeah. I, I don't know that you've ever seen any of the astronomy programs there, uh, Rishi, but I mean, they're fantastic. I mean, you know, looking through the the uh, the telescope and, you know, seeing a, like Saturn or something is is really quite an amazing experience. And, you know, and the knowledge that they have with the people that work there. Um, about astronomy is really quite remarkable. Yeah, so thank you for your time here with us. Um, it's greatly appreciated, and I am sure the people watching this at home will appreciate it as well. Well, thank you, everybody. And again, I, I really do appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to do this. I think it's uh, fantastic to uh, to reach out, and uh, you know, my door is always open. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Have everybody. Day. Have a great evening. Thank you evening. very much for coming bye -bye. to this interview. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.